Hey, what's up guys? I'm Nitej and in this episode 13 of the interesting JavaScript library of the week series, I will talk about store.js which does one thing and that too in a pretty good way and that is to store data in the browser. Store.js is not new and its first version was released around 10 years ago but it is very useful even today. If you need to store any kind of data for your web application in the browser, then you can do that easily using a very simple API provided by store.js. This library is supported across all the major browsers in different versions, so you probably won't have to worry about any kind of compatibility issues. When using it, it selects the best place to store the data based on the browser and its version. For example, if a browser does not support the newer storage medium like local storage, then it automatically falls back to another storage source like cookies, maybe global storage, etc. whichever is supported in the browser and the browser version in which the application is currently running. As far as installation goes, store.js can be installed either by using npm install command or by downloading the compressed release version from this dist folder and then placing it in the third party folder of our application. For the code example that I'm going to demonstrate, I downloaded this legacy.min.js file and then I placed it in a folder and then later referenced it using a script tag. In any case, once you have got store.js reference in the browser, you can start to use its API which mostly comprises of a bunch of functions to read and write data into the local storage. Let's now see a simple code example how that can be done. In this index.html file, the first thing that I will do is to add a bunch of HTML scaffolding and then the next thing I will do is to add the script tag which will be pointing to the downloaded script. You can place it in the third party folder if you are not using any kind of module loader. Otherwise, it's up to you how you want to get the reference of this script in the page that you are running. Now in the body, let's just create a script element. Inside it, I'm just going to create an employee list array and then inside this array, I'm going to push two employee objects which are going to have a bunch of properties for the employee. Now, the next thing that I will do is I will add this employee list to the storage of the browser in which this page is going to run. To do that, we just have to call store.set and then we have to provide the name of the data which we are going to use to reference to the data or the information that we are going to add to the storage and then after that we are going to provide the actual data as an argument. Now I'm going to save this page and then I'm going to open it in the browser using the live server visual studio code extension. This is going to open the application by hosting it in a local server with the port ID 5500. I have run this page and when this page has been run then this statement has been executed which has stored the employee list array into the browser's storage. We can check in Chrome if any data has been stored in the local storage or not by pressing F12 and then going to application and then going to the storage in the left pane and then clicking on local storage. You will have to expand it to see the data that we stored for this URL for our application and over here you can see that the employee list array is stored over here with two objects that we added to the array. Now just like we stored this array in the browser's storage, it is just as easy to fetch the information that we stored and that is by using the store.get function. So I'm just going to comment out this store.set and now this statement should log the array, the employee list array within the console. So let's check out. I'm going to save the page and this will automatically refresh the contents of the page. Now let's go to the console. You can see over here that the array is printed over here. Now we already checked that the data has been added to the local storage. So this exact data has been fetched by using its key which is employee list which you can see over here. Removing the added data is also simple. All we need to do is to either call store.remove and then provide the name of the key to remove the data which has been associated with this key and add it to the browser's storage. Or we can also call store.clear all which will clear everything from the browser's storage for our application. Right now I'm just going to use this store.remove by providing the name of the key. Now when I will save this web page then 
you can see that the employee list data is gone from the local storage because we called store.remove and this is the exact reason I find store.js highly useful because of how easy it is to use its APIs to set the data, fetch the data and then remove the data when we don't need it. Apart from the basic installation, there are also some plugins available which can enhance the usage of store.js. For instance, if you want to observe any changes in the value of stored data or if you want to have some kind of expiration time setup for the data that you are adding to the browser's storage, then these can be implemented by installing the plugins separately based on our needs. Or if you want, you can create your own plugins. There are guidelines given to do that if it's something you would be interested in. If you want to learn more about store.js, then you can visit its GitHub page whose link is provided in this video's description which has detailed info about the compatibility, usage and storage limitations. And that is everything this video has to offer for store.js. If you like it, then please don't forget to place a like on it and subscribe to this channel for more such videos. I am Nitej and I will see you next time. Till then, have fun.